Sniffly Joe here. Where's the sniffs, dude? Hello. Welcome. Hey, we got Raw down. We got the Oscars, right? Who yeah, won Best I Picture? Those. Who won Best uh, Picture in fucking 2006? Robert De Niro. Robert, <laughs> Robert De Niro. Martin, what would you think about this beautiful show? I I disagree. I love this show. I don't, don't listen to Cage Match. Cage Match gave it a 2.5 star out of 10. I don't I don't agree with that. Go watch Crash. It's directed Me and produced when I lie. by uh, Paul Haggis. That's who won 2006 Best Picture. That's who Vince was mad at. Ty watched this show in the background while workshopping a bit that him and Joe will do later. No, I watched the show. I watched the whole thing. Listen, we're in the Bible Belt today, pal. As Vince says. <laughs> yeah. Birmingham, Alabama. Is this you attempting to lead me into this segment? Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, Vince and Shane are here. All right. Yeah. Hot, all right. Hot opener from the Raw Down <laughs> podcast this week. Let's get into it. Uh, yeah. So we're from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, Vince and Shane come out with security around them. Uh, one of the first things they show is a sign that says the champ is queer. So oh, that's a pretty epic sign um things. vince sets up uh one side of the ring across from hard cam because what he's doing is he is giving his oscar speech because i guess the oscars were at some point around this time and they decided hey this is something cultural that we can latch on to because we don't have any ideas for ourselves so vince sets up at a podium shane is next to him and a small army of security is behind him the crowd starts chanting, you suck at him. And Vince says, this is the Bible Belt. You can't say that. Vince then says, the Oscars are three and a half hours of ass kissing to the small pop from the crowd. That's right. But that pales in comparison, we are told, to Shawn Michaels kissing Vince's ass. Vince thanks Shane for ki- thanks Shawn rather, for kissing <clears throat> his ass. And uh, making him horny, it seemed, based on the look on his face. And then they start to play, like, you know, generic award show music. And Vince puts on reading glasses and starts to make an acceptance speech. And he begins to thank several people for his, I guess, victory of getting Sean to eat his asshole. Um, Vince thanks the Spirit Squad for providing the cheer he needed to drop his pants. I'm not kidding. That is what he said. Uh, He thanks Chris Masters for his breathtaking master lock. And him and Carlito, as a result, will get a tag title shot at WrestleMania. I had just found out my grandma died four hours ago when I saw this. This was worse. Uh, Marty (laughs) Jannetty will not get a deal or ever appear in a WWE ring again, according to Vince. And uh, I'm pretty sure he did actually get fired again at this point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was gone. Yeah. And we don't really know why, but, I mean, he's Marty Jannetty, so you can assume. So, uh, does Jannetty ever come back? I think at some point he comes back, but not for this storyline at all. The unkillable Marty Jannetty eventually shows up again, (laughs) but he will not be back over the course of our watching of this show. Uh, Vince thanks all of us, the audience, for continuing to kiss our boss's asses and our lack of spine. Uh, He thanks Shane for his sense of touch and shane seems really confused about uh what the hell vince is talking about and vince for maybe the first time in his life says shane i love you because he made a grown man kiss vince mcmahon's ass and vince then proclaims at wrestlemania it will be Shawn michaels versus vince mcmahon and vince mcmahon is not the a standard billionaire owner of a company. Mm-hmm. What billionaire owner would be on the cover of Muscle and Fitness magazine? Let's fucking he go, then dude. turns and points to the Titan Tron. We wait several seconds. A picture shows up. We wait several more seconds. Some music starts to play. We wait probably 15 seconds after he throws to this. And the entire Titan Tron explodes into pyro. As we watch this, Shawn Michaels' music hits. Security run up to the ramp, and Sean, the smartest man in wrestling, comes in from the crowd behind the ring, gets a few shots in on Shane, and then security swarms him and pulls him off. It's like 20 guys. There's a lot of security here. 
And then Vince now decides that Shane is going to fight Shawn Michaels also tonight, not just on Saturday night's main event. And Shane is really mad about it. And we cut to commercial and we come back and it shows the WWE unlimited thing of what happened during commercial. Uh, Shane's like, dad, come on. I'm not ready to fight Sean yet. And Vince says, yeah, actually you are though. It's fine. And then he leaves. And that's the segment. I thought that segment was awesome. I thought it was great. It was just a <laughs> Vince being a pile of shit. And then Sean actually getting some stuff in and not being a dumbass. I thought it was really good. Yeah, it was a very creative camera angle, having the the Titan Tron behind them yeah. uh, instead of the typical hard cam of the side of the audience behind them, uh, like an award show. And Sean came out from the announcer's uh, angle, and they had it all in the back shot, too. Oh, sorry, by the way. Uh, I have some kind of sinus infection, uh, so I sound uh, no, fucking this is, hovel. This is reverse Joe. This is Ho. Uh, oh, we finally oh. get to see him. Oh God! All it takes is get a few Allegra in me, and I I morph. But uh, Joe, but yeah, it was it was now. maybe for the first time, uh, in a long time, and the last time, uh, WWE has a creative camera angle. So this one, I have to give them props for it. Listen, how about we get a big shout out to Ang Lee for best director, two thousand six. Thank you, Ang. Appreciate you. Thank you for making well, Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, it was an angly joint, for real. And then also, I have to give a big shout-out to 3-6 Mafia for getting Best Original Song. That's right. That's right. Was it Mark Henry's theme song? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mark Henry. We'll, we'll get that soon. So now we got an Intercontinental Championship match between uh, Shelton Benjamin defending his belt with Ric Flair. Uh, rematch from last week. Mama Benjamin is so proud of her son tonight. I'm so happy to see Mama Benjamin every single time. It's such it's just like a breath of fresh air whenever she gets her. rolled into the ring. Um, unfortunately, this match went like one minute, one or two minutes. Um, I thought they did a lot of cool moves, a lot of cool suplexes, uh, smacks, uh, a lot of good selling. And I don't know why this only lasted like around two minutes, 2.30 I think is what it says. But uh, Rick gets Sheldon in the corner. Sheldon th uh, tries to thumb Ric Flair's eyes and instead r thumbs the ref's eyes. And as that happens, Rick is uh, putting Sheldon in the figure four and Sheldon taps. Uh, ref rings for the bell and says, winner by disqualification, Ric Flair. So Rick does not become champion. I thought that was an awesome finish. Very creative. I don't, yeah, that shit I don't, was funny. I laugh so fucking hard, and then Rick <laughs> decides to just harass Mama Benjamin, steal her oxygen tank, and beat the shit <laughs> of Sheldon with it. I couldn't. <laughs> and fucking Rick Flair starts strutting around. I I thought that was awesome. This is funniest shit. Yeah, no notes. They had it here. I, I love mean... it. I don't know what's going on, but I'm in it. <laughs> I have a few notes. Uh, oh. The ref for this match just looks very sad. Well, because he was going to get his I'm, eye gouged out. <laughs> I, guess. I don't know why. Uh, Shelton hits Ric Flair with the Samoa drop, and Rick barely gets his leg out of the way, or else would have planted it on the ground and shattered his leg. So uh, your weekly Ric Flair almost dies or gets horrifically maimed in a ring segment. So Shelton holds Ric Flair up for a vertical suplex for quite a long time. Rick is an old man, and his blood pressure is seven. I thought he was going to pass out or die as a result of this as well. <laughs> Please don't hold this old man up for that long. I know it's how Ric Flair wants to die, but you shouldn't do that. Did he scream afterwards? I don't remember. Did he go, ah, oh, oh, my back! He always does that. Him or Shawn Michaels, I'm sure, did. And uh, we cut to break, and of course we get a WWE.com unlimited moment. Those Wait, hold dead, on. Huh? Oh, hold on. I have two things before that. Go on. They set up the WrestleMania Rewind, oh. which is the gimmick for tonight, where they're just going to redo two matches that were at WrestleMania's at before. Point, yeah. That being Cena versus Big Show and Triple H versus Kane. Not looking forward to either of these, but <laughs> they show like the vintage graphics with the old WrestleMania logo and the old music. It was a nice. It was a cool looking graphic. That was fun. I wish the matches were better. 
Yeah. Also, Ty, you have forgotten our I know. number one fan. I was in about to say, he Peter said hi Gabriel. to us. Hello. Hi there. And then big time. We are 27 days away from WrestleMania. Ooh. 26, baby. And then we get into 22. 22. Ha ha ha. And then we get into WWE Unlimited. Yeah, and we got a SmackDown uh, general manager, Teddy Long, here. And uh, I assume everyone's going to boo it, but uh, I don't know why RVD was there. Look, here, here are the conglomerate of Raw Down. We respect the power and the authority of one Theodore Long. It's too bad that he has to manage a shit show like SmackDown. Fair enough. It's true. Fair enough. I also agree. I have two notes. One of them is that Teddy Long is just saying, hey, Money in the Bank is interpromotional. And the second one is, why did Rob Van Dam have to be here? Yeah, why is RVD he here? He's like, RVD hey. is here in a stinky little t-shirt because he wrestled uh, the Heat match. He, in a dark match, wrestled and defeated Chuck Palumbo. What? Yes. Chuck's back? Chuck's back. Chucky, Chucky's I think... He's back. Does he come back at the end of 06, early 2007, as that biker gimmick? Because I, as a kid, I loved that gimmick. I thought he was the coolest. I don't know why. <laughs> it just was like, damn, this guy's awesome. But then he disappeared. I was like, what the fuck happened to Chuck Palumbo? It's okay. He's back on heat. That's crazy. Once we get heat velocity or velocity. Heat velocity. Going. Yeah, I'm ready for that. Or velo no, velocity heat. Velocity heat, yeah. Yeah. We'll, Stay tuned uh, for that one. You don't have to do this podcast yeah, network, I mean, uh, fam. Maybe, maybe Joe, we can. Uh, maybe if you if you're feeling better, we can record some later. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see how that goes, pal. Listener, <laughs> I am here to promise you, I will never watch that show and debase myself. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, am. I will debase myself with Kingdom Hearts. That is it. Listen, I am excited for the Kingdom Hearts stuff whenever it decides to come out in like 2024. Mm-hmm. Yeah, essentially, Teddy Long's here. He just says, hey, SmackDown's going to be in the Money in the Bank. I don't know where he gets the authority to, to say that, but awesome. He had the pleasure to announce it to us. And RVD's like, awesome, dude. I'm glad to be I here. I don't think he says anything. I feel I think he just stands there. He just stands well, there. Well, I just, I just As, imagine him saying that. Well, the qualifying matches will start that Friday uh, Friday, quote unquote, on on SmackDown. So surely, maybe he's referencing that Rob Van Dam will be put in some kind of qualifying match to be entered into the Money in the Bank uh, match. He's already, he, but he already won, again, he already won his Money in the Bank qualifying match against Carlito last week. Yeah, I thought this already happened on Raw. No, just doing this is what Smackdown. Teddy Long says. Teddy Long says that the qualifying matches start on SmackDown. So. Yeah, well, I think he SmackDown means SmackDown really. specifically. Yeah. SmackDown always late to the party. Am I right, fellows? That's right. True. It's time to play the game. Yeah, it sure, it sure fucking was. <laughs> so, we got Triple H versus Kane, which apparently happened at a WrestleMania. 15, I don't care which one. <laughs> WrestleMania 15. Uh, Ty, go ahead and pull up the star rating of that match, if you could, for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this. of course. So we start with uh, this wrestling match, most important thing, which is Triple H is going to be on Conan. Uh, we couldn't find that segment. It doesn't around exist. This time. I can only either he got bumped or there was just a torrent of objectionable content from somebody on that show and it was buried. Um, so I don't know. From, but... from the Conan O'Brien Wikipedia page where it says uh, like the – guests and it has pretty good amount of guests on every single episode but the episode that he was supposed to be on does not have like it just has one person and it's read it out so something must have happened on that episode and i can't find any footage <laughs> all right that episode got turbo deleted i'm just going to assume that he <laughs> hit conan with a pedigree and broke his neck is yeah. what happened there Yet again, as with every Kane match, slow chemical, the best thing that happens. That's right. Kane does not get his pyro for the start of the match. Is this a sign of who wins? Spoilers, it is not. Triple H and Kane spend 10 minutes coming to the ring, which, thank God, reduces the amount of time they have to actually wrestle. Triple H dances around for about a minute, then he distracts the ref and eye pokes Kane. There is a nega pop for this. Nobody fucking cares about any of this. 
after the eye poke, Joey Styles says, no matter how big or strong you are, your eyes are vulnerable. Thank you, Joey Styles. Triple H beats up Kane. Kane does the sit-up. Kane goes for the Kane line. He gets crotched. I write, I am so fucking bored. <laughs> Kane hits a clothesline. Kane hits a sidewalk slam. Kane goes up really high for the Kane line. That was pretty cool. Kane goes for the choke slam. Chris Masters comes out, oh, distracts yeah. Kane. And he pulls Triple H out of the ring, who is pulling on the ref. So two people are being pulled in a chain out of this ring. So the ref cannot see Carlito, who has also come down. And Carlito spits in the face of Kane. Kane's corpse is thrown back into the ring. Triple H sets up for the pedigree. Triple H tries to hold Kane's arms down the whole way to make him actually sell. Kane says, absolutely not, and flails around to take the bump on one knee. And Triple H wins. This shit sucked. Wahoo. Shout out to my boys, Chris Masters and Carlito. Getting the that dub for chain, the Triple H. The human chain was pretty funny. And the apple spitting is usually pretty good. Zero stars. <laughs> That's a lot more than uh, what Dave gave uh, Triple H versus Kane at uh, WrestleMania 15. And by a lot, I mean they got one. They got one star. What well, what was the hot story for that? I don't know. All right, perfect. One star, <laughs> like how many years ago was that? Five years ago when they were, man, that's that rough. Seven years ago. So it's really, so it's really like a point two five. Seven yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, because it'd be ninety nine. Oh. Was this a DX thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because on that card they had. Uh... <laughs> that was actually like one of the higher matches because Sable versus Tori got negative two star. <laughs> Negative? He went negative? Uh, Undertaker versus Big Boss Man got a dud. Uh, Mankind versus Paul White got a 0. 0.75. Wow. Word. Yeah, that, Impressive that, that's a tough that the wrestling doesn't sudden die. Yeah, the highest was Stone Cold versus Rock. That got 3.5. Damn. Damn. For a mania, that's kind of rough, man. <clears throat> All right. Well, here's some real superstars that can show... <laughs> Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock a thing or two. We are sent backstage to Tori Wilson and Victoria uh, getting and ready. And the dog Chloe. that yeah. most definitely is real. It doesn't look real. Alright, I'm going to yell about that real quick. So, the whole time that Tori's talking, she starts petting it. There's no motion on that dog. And it has a cowboy hat. And I thought, wow, that's a really cool cowboy hat. But you, it's mm -hmm. covering the eyes. Yeah, and it's just not moving the whole time, so I don't think that's a real dog. <laughs> Look, it's very weird, man. Based based on based on my my recent uh, experiences this week, I'm willing to believe Tori Wilson gave her dog an Allegra, and the dog was just kind of vibing. <laughs> so that's all right. It's no problem. Chloe is Chloe is looking real and healthy, just like our our superstars here is what Nico would say. But I'm filling in for him here. Thank it's you. fine. They're getting ready because tonight Candace Michelle's Playboy cover is going to be um, pre a premiered, shown to the world. Um, and uh, oh. Victoria assures uh, Tori Wilson it's fine, and Candace is still cool with you, even though you screwed up her her uh, women's championship match uh, the, the the week prior. Was it the week prior or two yes. weeks? Yeah, that was last week. <laughs> Yeah, um, and Tori is like, "Hmm, okay," and then that's it. That's that's the last we see of the women for uh, quite a bit. The women competing, at least. That's right. Oh, sensational they also, things they are happening. The will be naked out there tonight. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I uh, is that is that little vignette of Candace Michelle? Uh, and the Playboy photographer right after this, or no, is it right no, before? We get, we get the the Marty Jannetty special. Oh, next. of course. Yeah. Yes, yes. All yeah, right. Yeah, because well... Marty Jannetty couldn't be there, and I'm sure this is what this gimmick was supposed to be for. But instead, they gave it to Sean. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is the best segment on the show. 
and I mean, not like because it's good, but because it's, I mean, it caught, it kept my interest for more than three minutes because thanks, this is one of the most dense segments of all time. So Todd wanders into Sean's locker room. Sean's like, I don't fucking have time, Todd. Get out of here. I don't want questions. And then Stephanie McMahon with baby in, in her stomach is here. She's like, hey, Sean, what's up? And Sean's like, Todd, fuck off. Get out of here. All right, Stephanie, what like, what do you want? Fuck you. I've had enough of your family. You people are ruining my life. What do you get, get out of here? I don't care. I just don't care. And Stephanie's like, wow, I'm pregnant and kids change you, Sean. Please forgive me. I'm a better person now because I have to be because I'm pregnant, I guess. Um. She says, and I quote, if you don't give me a chance, then maybe my baby and I will never have a chance together. What did she mean by this? Is Shawn Michaels going to get so mad that Stephanie McMahon will miscarry? Is Shawn Michaels the heartbreak fetus? Does he have the power to delete the fetus? Oh my. What does that mean? If she doesn't get forgiveness from Shawn Michaels, will she just get too sad and not be able to have this baby? What, she what the do? fuck does that line mean, It's dude? Uncle Shawn, like, dude. Triple H oh is the dad. Oh my. Will the baby never forgive Stephanie? Is yeah. that what she's talking about? What does that mean? You can't... I, I don't <laughs> know. Oh my. They have to go to Shawn because Shawn's the only one that's religious in this company. So they have to get forgiveness from Shawn. <laughs> Is so the baby to going to hell? Is yes. that the bit? Probably. <laughs> what? Okay, so Shawn Michaels either has the power over unborn children or the power to send people to hell, according to Stephanie McMahon, I guess. So she's here to pray at his altar. Or and that's why he's the goat. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> however, Bret Hart, heartbreak kid, uh-huh. are they the angle and the devil? Oh Possibly. my! They switch depending on what time it is. Yep. Wow. We got it. That's we why, got that's it. What, that's, wow. that's that's the yin and yang of this company. Wow. Yeah, we. Yeah, we got it, folks. And the Montreal screw job was a uh, uh, Lucifer turning on God, and Vince is Lucifer in this metaphor. See, it all works out. Remember, it all works. This is an allegory for the New Testament. Yeah, because remember yeah. the the incels, the guys that don't have sex, are the the good guys, and the sex havers are the bad guys. So that's now we got... true. And Stephanie had sex, and so did Hunter. And now they're bad. They're the bad guys. And they have to for, they have to get forgiveness from Sean, who took away all of his own sex and yes, illegal Sean activities. Had, yes, Sean had sex and then turned against sex in its entirety. Tune in it, two again. months from now when we have to deal with God fighting in the ring. We're gonna... I don't know what he's talking about. We, we, <laughs> there, there's always, there's always a battle with God in our souls, brother. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. It's definitely true. nothing else. Okay. Yeah. So we solved it. We cracked the case. Yeah. Sex bad, as always. And Shawn Michaels uh, controls the lives of unborn children everywhere. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie McMahon says, all right, listen, I'm here to apologize for... My dad and my brother, they're not going to apologize to you because they fucking suck. So I will. And I'm sorry for everything I've ever done to you, Sean. And Sean softens will be like, okay, you know, thanks, whatever. And then Stephanie McMahon starts having contractions, seemingly breathing heavily and has to, like, sit down. And Sean gets concerned about this. And, uh... She's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Can you get me some water, though? And Sean leaves to go get it from a cooler or something. And then Stephanie McMahon goes over to a little end table Sean has where he has a bottle of water, uh, pulls out something from her titties, and begins to pour a powder into Sean Michaels' water bottle, mm -hmm. and then closes it up, goes back onto the seat, can you pretend to have contractions? Sean gives her the new water bottle. And she's like, okay, thanks, Sean. Thank you. Again, I'm sorry, whatever. And she leaves. And we see a fading shot of Sean just staring out the door, looking kind of confused. But he's like, well, I guess that was nice. Then he starts drinking the drug water. 
Yeah, mm, that yeah. Allegra really hit him later on. No, that was the Zyrtec. No, oh, my bad. She she hit him she hit him with the Zyrtec powder. The so, Zyrtec slam. Again, sex is bad. And uh Shawn Michaels is going to see the Benadryl man. Yep. <laughs> and <laughs> Stephanie McMahon just carries rupees around, I guess. I mean, yeah. I'm you know, look, uh Oh yeah, come on. Yeah. They're I'm not gonna fans. make the jokes, but yeah. They're all sure. fans here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we we just witnessed a, a legendary allegory that Vince McMahon had been cooking for the past forty will, years. Will this be in the uh, court case later on? Current yeah, day? maybe. Hopefully. But hopefully we get. But it. as powerful of a storyteller as Vince McMahon is, where we get a debate of is sex good or not, we are once again uh, introduced to the power of sex and sexy women as we are subjected to probably one of the creepiest but probably one of the most normal guys because i'm sure every every playboy photographer is a weirdo and the guy they got for this fucking little segment was probably the most normal adjacent one it was like licking his lips and is like oh yeah candace she's got great poses she's got a great physique she's a wonderful person she's cool yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's all really, all, really all the nice. while she's like posing in like a in like a like a swimsuit bikini and stuff. <laughs> they... <laughs> she also <laughs> says this is a very classy magazine. And uh-huh. all the girls it shows around... the art of a woman. Yep. It shows oh, the art yeah. of a woman. Every woman said this around this time because I think they were forced to <laughs> with their contract. <laughs> Because after uh, what's his face passed away, they were like, "Oh yeah, it was the worst shit. It was awful. Mm-hmm. This was a terrible environment." <laughs> Mister Hefner stopped paying tribute to the ancient gods, and it all came crumbling down. That's what he was doing. He was tributing to Sean. Holy shit! No, he wouldn't. He would back. never tribute to Sean. Well, he Sean's... would never tribute to oh, Sean. Sean would smite him if he ever saw him. Sean, Sean is a holy paladin so in the he, way of so light in the name of Bret Jesus Hart. Christ. That's why Bret Hart's not here. That's why we just see Hefner, PNGs of him. Yes, Hugh Hefner does Bret Hart come tribute. You heard it here first. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> holy shit, dude. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, so then after that video segment ends um, and the contemplation of the holy way of light is over, we go back to the ring and uh, we see Victoria and Tori Wilson and the definitely real dog, Chloe. No, the, the dog's not out here, right? I don't think the dog... I don't have any notes on the dog. So I feel like the dog okay. is here. The, the, dog, the dog is taking a breather backstage. <laughs> uh, so Victoria and Tori out in the ring. Um, and they're here to announce Miss Candace Michelle herself. And then they have like a big uh, like box or something <clears throat> that is supposed to be the cover of it and then the box you know uh, they 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 have candace come down to the ring uh and then candace sends that box up into the heavens and then we reveal get the reveal no, no she of... does it she's in the yeah she's in the box yeah. oh i forgot yeah they lift it up and she's wearing exactly the same thing oh that's on the, the, uh the cover all right right, right all right, right allegra right, right. joe forgot Restart yeah. the segment. Run that again. Okay. You got it. All right. Bro, uh, can I get a can I get a recap of everything again? I'm <laughs> Wait, did I say uh, Joe? Oh no. Def- meant, oh. Definitely, definitely real dog. Um, as <laughs> no. Tora, Victoria. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go forward. <laughs> yeah, she's she's revealed from the box. Uh, it is her, or she's wearing exactly what she had on the cover. And she's like, wow, it's so hot in here. Uh, I'm, I'm so hot again. Too hot for the Super Bowl. Too hot for GoDaddy. Uh, I'm way hotter than Trish Stratus and Stacey Keebler. Coachman, those are, those... Coachman jump scares you and says, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all this is happening. The crowd is going just catastrophically mild. Yeah, uh, it's the most awkward thing. She's just been parading around, kind of, and the audience of mostly children, and then uh, dads who don't want to get yelled at mm-hmm. are just kind of like, "Well, I guess this is happening." And coach is covering by saying, uh, "Candace has made everybody speechless." 
That's right. The Bible Belt doesn't know how to respond to a beautiful woman. He's so real for that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Candace taunts Tori. She's like, I'm the hottest cover Playboy ever. I'm way hotter than both of the covers you did, Tori Wilson. Isn't that right? And Tori's like, trying to be nice. She's like, yeah, it looks good. And Candace is like, that's not what I asked you. You have to say here right now, this is the hottest thing ever, and it's way hotter than you. Uh, and then Tori's like, yeah, well, I mean, I thought it's okay. You know? Uh, and very clearly, you know, Candace is like, oh, my goodness. I'm I'm so sorry. I, I've been kind of mean to you. You know, I, I, my nerves, you know, my nerves have been so so high strung and, and whatnot out of all the pressure of being the face of the, the women's division or some shit. Uh, and then they hug, <clears throat> and then uh, they, uh, her and Victoria wink at each other, and Victoria and Candace just start beating the shit out of each other, uh, out of uh, out of Tori, out of Tori Wilson. Wow. The vixens are no more. The vixens are no more. We have no more. <gasps> Vince's devils. They're gone. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're called. They're unleashed. Look, man. <laughs> it's it's over. Uh and then just just for added uh mildness uh and just, just how is the crowd supposed to respond to now Victoria and Candace are are leaving the ring and then they just have a, an incredible kiss with each other, I guess. Oh. They just go full they go full into it. All right. And it's it's really something. Cool. And then uh yes. yeah. And I think Sean, Sean, Sean was getting so so heated up. He had to drink some water. Isn't that right? He was like dying in the back. He's like, oof, <laughs> <laughs> oof. I gotta finish my water though. I think yeah. I just a little parched. And he just, just finishes up Ooh. the water bottle. <laughs> I didn't I know if I should add more. that as a segment or not, but I was laughing really yeah, hard. Yeah, Sean Michaels drinks the water. He goes glub 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 glub. But he was like on his knees, like he's like, oh shit. Oh. He was... <laughs> I don't. I don't feel very good. I need more praying. of this delicious water. Oh no! <laughs> he was praying that uh, that the evil sex haver Stephanie McMahon I th- uh, could have a her baby as a result of her <laughs> seeking forgiveness could be saved. I or whatever I, the fuck. I so, thought he was doing that shit because I I uh, I wrote down Shawn Michaels water prayer, <laughs> and I was like, that's that's it, right? He's just praying to water. Yeah. Yep. Good. That's definitely what it was. Sweet. Also, during the Candace cover unveiling, Jerry Lawler, after uh, they all started fighting, says all women secretly hate each other, especially beautiful women. That's at least the second time he said, he said that. that Thank before. You, yes, oh. at least once, probably more than that. Real quick, since we're talking about Jerry Lawler, uh, during the Shawn Benjamin match, uh, Mama was getting rolled out to the ring, and Jerry Lawler says, Mama reminds me of my favorite band. Nine Inch Nails and Jerry and then Jerry, the coach goes, "Ow!" <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one was a pretty good one, I guess. But I don't, I don't think Jerry Lawler listens to Trent Reznor. I'm gonna keep it 100 percent with you. I do not. <laughs> Shane versus Sean now. Wow, they're giving us a preview of Saturday Night's main event. I can't, I can't believe it. Oh my goodness! Is I, this mine? Yes. I legitimately <laughs> forgot. I flashed right. you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Strong said, "I was sorry. I was looking up Jerry Lawler Nine Inch Nails. Uh, <laughs> I can't find anything uh, specifically on that. So Ty's probably right. Anyway, so Shawn Michaels has prayed to the God of Water and consumed all of his bounty. Um, so uh, we see that uh, one of the first things we see back from commercial is a sign that says Vince needs needs Jesus. So either this is a plant." Or we have yet another time traveler at a wrestling show. Uh, we are informed that Raw is brought to you by the movie V for Vendetta. Mm-hmm. The incel to Raw pipeline remains extraordinarily strong. I don't know what V for Vendetta is, but I know the worst people in the world like it. So, <laughs> shout out to that for wrestling. Uh, just for men. Uh, the video game Black, now on Game Pass. We're going to play that uh, shit, I swear. One day, yeah. Joe's check out. You don't have to play this in uh-huh. twenty twenty-five. Maybe tonight, Joe. For our review of Black uh-huh. <laughs> and, and Snickers. Thank you, Snickers. Sean, uh, Sean Michaels makes his way to the ring. He seems to be fine. 
it seems. He's not really showing any effects. Shane comes out, does the Shane stuff. Uh, when Sean gets in the ring, uh, immediate hockey fight. Sean gets the better of this. They fight for a little bit. Sean Michaels eventually goes over the rope onto the apron, and he has to wait there for a good few seconds for Shane to punch him because Shane is late on his timing. Um, they continue fighting, but as the match goes on, the strikes that Shane is landing are seeming to have an outside effect on Sean. Uh, his core ambient memories, I think, are kicking in at this point. That's right. Sean's offense starts to get a little labored. He's still able to fight back a little, but he's striking slower, and it seems to have less of an effect on Shane as the match goes on. Um, there's a double down. Uh, Sean does the kiff up. He gets 90% of the way there and then just staggers back down. Uh, we are starting to get more of the effects of the devil drugs that Sean has consumed. Mm-hmm. Steph must have put a lot in there because I'm sure it takes a lot to knock Sean down at this point. Um <laughs> The doctors are coming out, and they're like, hey, this guy clearly can't fucking move. We need to look at him. And Vince is like, no, no. Stop it. It's fine. Uh, Sean's just staggering around. Shane is just toying with him, hitting strikes, waiting for Sean to get back up in a few seconds. Uh, The ref has tried to call the match so many times, and Shane just keeps saying, no, no, don't you do it. Uh, Shane has barely done anything. This match has been only strikes. I'm not sure how many bumps Shane has even taken. But he is so sweaty and red. His blood pressure was always a thousand, even back then. It is worse now, but he was already sweating to death. And after a while, Shane just hits like a punch. It's not like the you know like a big show punch or whatever. It even looks like showy. It's just like a strike. And this is when Sean has just had enough. The drugs have overtaken him yet again. He's just down for quite a while. Shane pins him. Shane wins. They celebrate for a bit, and then Shane uh, calls Lillian Garcia over, yells something at her. She looks confused and mad, but then announces that uh, another match has just been booked. Uh, Vince McMahon versus Shawn Michaels. Vince McMahon gets lit as shit, uh, takes off his suit jacket, comes in and pins the still-prone corpse of Shawn Michaels from the punch that was delivered about three minutes ago. They get excited, and the Spirit Squad comes out. Uh, Shane seems very excited to see them. He's all in on the Spirit Squad. Vince is always kind of put off by these guys, but Vince's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. And they lift them up on the Spirit Squad shoulders, and they're celebrating. We go to commercial. Big time, big time is how we get introduced to this. Uh, Peter Gabriel does not endorse this next segment we're about to talk about. I'll I'll, 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 I'll tackle this fucking shit. Okay. okay. So Spirit Squad's in the ring. They're doing their little bits. They're doing their little cheering. Uh Vince and Shane wandered off. We don't get we don't know where they're at. They're gone. Um which is good because Eugene's here for his match, unfortunately. Let's just say right now, uh fuck D- Nick Dinsmore for this shit. This is garbage. Fuck you, dude, Nick Dinsmore. Dude, you I piece don't of shit. I don't give a fuck. This shit was awful. Also, Dolph Ziggler, come on, man, what the hell was this? <clears throat> I mean, Nick. Yeah, not not as not as greatest moment. Uh, Eugene comes out. Uh, they have this blow horn, this air horn, and Eugene wants it, and they start just like neener neenering him and uh, hitting him with the uh, "you can't have this," and Eugene really wants it. It was really bad, very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable segment because they're just yeah, messing this... around with the. Uh, a this special crowd is pin drop quiet. Yeah, even the Birmingham, Alabama crowd in 06 does not endorse this. Uh, in my notes, they did might have called them something bad. I'm not gonna say it. Uh, but Kenny just bops them in the head, and there's a match. It's Eugene versus Kenny. This match went five minutes. It's like the longest match up into the main event at this point, and. It's really just Kenny being the shit out of Eugene. And uh, the Spirit Squad just pounding on the mat. They're so excited for Kenny to beat up Eugene. And I, it's so uncomfortable watching Eugene wrestle. I don't get the gimmick. I don't get who likes this shit or who approved this shit. Or why you would even put yourself through this gimmick. Because this is not fun. This is not funny, and this is very sad to watch. 
Eugene does get his little comeback. He hits the rock bottom, and as he goes for the, the uh, people's elbow, the spirit squad gets up on the apron and distracts the ref. Uh, Johnny comes in from the other side and does the Kofi Kingston trouble in paradise. Uh, Kenny goes up to the top and hits the leg drop, and Kenny looks like he fucking died to Eugene. Like, what the fuck was that? This shit was awful. Everyone involved should be ashamed. And the crowd was uh, very upset to see that happen. Yeah. That sucked, but putting that aside, like, I mean, I'm sure we'll see this more, but it seems like in the past weeks, like, Kenny is the guy out of all of yes. these they're kind of trying to push. Yeah, Kenny was, like, the golden guy. I don't even know if he was supposed to be the leader, because they kind of, like, said that Mitch was at one point, but definitely Kenny's the the golden goose of the group. Yeah, he's the biggest one. He's so. the Sean that they want to push. <laughs> yeah, like he's the guy, or at least is the one that's trained the most, because he seems to get the most time in all of these matches. Yeah, giving him a five-minute match on a show where no one else gets time is crazy. Yeah, but fuck Kenny Dykstra. Uh, <laughs> Rip Bozo. Rip Bozo. We split uh, show off gang. squad pack. Where we at? Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck the Fed. You know what? I gotta Fuck bring that. Fed. This this actually gets deserved for uh, having us deal with Eugene and Nick Dinsmore. Fuck Nick Dinsmore. Fuck the Fed. That's right. One more time. Oh, <laughs> already closed. It. But we're gonna get yeah. it one more time. Fuck the Fed. That's right. I love to we'll hear bring, it. We'll bring this back up in 2174 when we get to 2016 SmackDown. And then in 34-17, when we get back <laughs> to the Dirty Dogs running wild all over whatever show they were on. Did they ever win a belt? The Probably. Dirty Dogs? Was that... Was that uh... Dolphin Bobber. Yeah, they did. They yes, did. They, did. they, they were they the Smackdown, SmackDown Tag yes. Team Champions. And then they did go down to NXT after that and demolish that bozo Bron Rick Peter. Steiner's son. <laughs> Yeah, Bobby Roode's been like injured for like two years. I really hope that guy gets better. That that's really sad. Yeah, he recently had to have like another neck procedure, yeah. so it's kind of fucked. Very tough. But yeah, now we got an actual. Women's speaking of on the show. speaking of neck procedures, we get a <laughs> clip of uh, Edge and Lita in the back <laughs> getting ready for Lita's match versus Maria. Um, and then we cut the break, and then out comes Maria, and then out comes. Lita, uh, and the like comparison between these two is just crazy because Maria just looks like some person they picked up off the street, and then Lita does actually look like a professional wrestler. <laughs> so it's it's pretty crazy that we are kind of subjected to this, even though the mixed tag match between Lita and Edge and John Cena Maria was like actually a month ago. Yeah, we got to finish. This story. Uh, in episodes, yeah, we had to finish the story. Maria has to finish the story against Lita or something. Uh, there's a big, there's like seven people that have like a like a sign, like all the working together that says Lita is a ho. I think they were just ch uh, shouting out <clears throat> Reverse Joe. Yeah, yeah, they were they were calling on on his his, uh, his desecrated his name to come out and and represent the women. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much going on in this match. It only goes for, like, th maybe not even three minutes. Like a snap suplex. Uh, and then Lita kisses Edge from the ropes. Uh, Maria tries to get a roll-up, and it doesn't really uh, work. Again, we get more ho, uh, and Lita is perturbed by it. And then Lita starts pulling Maria's hair and whatnot. And then Lita hits the DDT and then wins. Uh, and Very then good. after that, Edge gets into the ring. She's like, yeah, 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 Lita, go go get her up. I'll spear her. I'll spear Maria. <laughs> like 80 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And Edge get is absolutely Edge. demolished. I'm not saying I wouldn't like to see it, but it would, it would truly be a scene. I mean, he'd be killing her. And then, uh, but it's okay. Because uh, McFoley is here to save the day. Uh, here in the name of Maria and uh, Scooter, 
He comes out to <laughs> beat up Edge. And they're just kind of going back and forth. And Lita, <laughs> Lita like hops on Mick's back. I'm surprised Mick's knees didn't give out uh, <laughs> from the weight of uh, Lita. And then Edge, uh, you know, hits him with a spear and and sets up a concerto and just fucking demolishes him, kills him. Uh, and uh, the hardcore match at WrestleMania is on. We are Ooh. ready. Yeah, that, I think that the crowd was, was very nice upset thing. with this too. Yeah, yeah. When he set up for the concerto, the crowd was pleading for John Cena to come out, but John Cena was too busy on eight Chan, so yeah, you... he was unable to <laughs> attend this match. That's right. Was... And to give you just a, a, I mean, you should just accept the commentary is terrible during all of these matches. Just to give you like a snapshot of how bad it was for this, of all people, Jerry Lawler. Is like, coach, shut the fuck up about Playboy. We need to talk about this match. This is Jerry Lawler saying this. You can only imagine how bad coach was on this. <laughs> and after Lita wins, Jerry asks, well, what did that prove? Yep. <laughs> really which, spot which, on stuff here. When, when which, Jerry's on, he's on. Yeah, which was insightful. And also, he's right. There was no point to this. Thank you, Jerry. Whatever I, I agree with you. But... Whatever intern, whatever some intern injected into Lawler, um, you know, during that match, just keep giving it to him because it was actually very competent here, and uh, it just immediately like shits away. Because how is Jerry so bad so often? I guess every 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 star gets its shine to gets its chance to shine, but. Uh, I don't know, dude. I mean, it's it's such a bad team here, and we're subject to this for a very long time. Coach is for sure the worst, right? Like, yes. uh huh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Joey Styles was, but Coach just will not shut up. I didn't even recognize Joey Styles on commentary tonight at all. I don't think he said like three things. Yeah, He's I mean, like the eye thing. Joey's yeah, not. The eye thing. Joe, Joey Styles not great, but Coach actually has no idea what's going on. <laughs> I have never been more validated in my takes from the past when Je when Coach came back on commentary like whatever X amount of years ago. Like this guy just sucks shit and he's a douchebag and I hate him. And I was always right. I was always correct. Welcome to Madden Ultimate Team. I'm your host, Coach, and I'm ready to get back into this next segment with the Hall of Fame inductees. <laughs> Jonathan Coachman is on Carlito and Chris Masters level heat from me. <laughs> Well deserved. Yeah, so we, they now announced that Bret Hart will be uh, inducted by Stone Cold Steve Austin. We got Eddie Guerrero being inducted by Chavo, Rey Mysterio, and Chris Benoit. We got Mean Gene. And who? Huh? Who? Yeah. Oh, that's SmackUp. Yeah, it was right. Chavo and Ray and. Yeah, Chris Benoit. He's on SmackUp. He's alive. Who? Huh? Janelle, it's Chavo. Oh, look, Ty, you keep trying to say something, but I hear Chavo. I hear Rey Mysterio, right. and then I hear you say "and." Yeah, so then and then got, just nothing. We got Crispin, and then Wa. It might be, it might be a little. Is my mic okay? I feel a little muted. But yeah, no, I think Ooh. it's just those two people, just Chavo and Ray. Yeah, yeah, okay. Chavo and Ray and yeah, Possibly, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Mean Gene's gonna be inducted by Hulk Hogan. I oh, up. great. And then now they're announcing that Sensational Sherry is gonna be in the Hall of Fame, and that's awesome. She's Amazing, wonderful in the ring, wonderful manager, wonderful human being. Awesome. Awesome job. Everyone this, else is... This seems like a pretty late induction. Yes. Was she Was she even alive? I think she was. I think she passed away in 07? Let me look it up. Who sure. puts yeah, her I... in? Moolah? Oh, God, no. Yeah, so they... And then they have the package with people talking about like how cool she is. Vince keeps calling her a woman manager, which seems really denigrating. He's trying to be nice, but like Shawn Michaels is really being nice and really putting her over here. Oh my! Mm -hmm. Like she, they should have just let him talk. As loath as I am to say that, he did by far the best job on this thing. Um, he was like, "Yeah, no, listen, Sherry like made my career. She's great. I love that lady. She's incredible. She she passed. So in shout out to Shawn Michaels. But she was in okay. TNA." Later on in 06, being a manager for Bobby Roode. 
which is well, uh, that's uh, awesome. Well, back up. Uh, <laughs> when yeah. Backup finally gets sick of their show and crosses the line uh, later this year, or by this year, I mean 2027, when we get to June ish, you may hear about Sherry Martell on TNA. Well, yeah, that'd be fun. Also, uh, Bree Woo, Bree Woo hit him with the guitar again. I'm saying. We go in the back, and Mickey James is very excited. She loves Sherry. And then Trish is like, what the fuck is up with you, Mickey? We need to talk. Mickey's like, what do, you, what do we need to talk about? As Mickey's like sniffing her magazine that has Trish on it. Trish is like, this is this is way too much. What are you doing? Are you licking the magazine? And she's like, I'm done with you, dude. Mickey's like, what are you what are you talking about? Like, I just, what? And Trish's like, you're like all up in my hoo-ha. You're all up in my coochie. You're doing all this weird shit. Like, I'm sick oh of you, dude. I don't want to be with you. Like we're not dating. This is not this is not okay. Mickey's just like what the fuck are you talking about, man? And uh Trish like we're done and she walks away. Mickey is very upset about this situation. Do you think Trish has some resentment against Mickey oh, for, for Jack. having Jack yes. uh, be incarcerated in a federal penitentiary? Jack is currently smacking his head against the bars. Hoping uh, Trish come save her, uh, save him, but he he'll never get saved. He's gone for life, as he should be. Uh, they announced Jack. <laughs> Jack in the future turns out to be one of the henchmen in the Batman Arkham Asylum video game. There you go. It's a tragic end. Gets strung up on a gargoyle. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> R.I.P. Jack. We'll Damn, miss. brother. Jack, renowned for being Trish Stratus's boyfriend and saying it's the bat. It's the Thank bat. You, Jack. <laughs> so that's definitely me when it's the bat. <laughs> True. We uh we got the Saturday night main event card. We got Sean versus Shane in the street fight coming up, which I mean if it's as good as tonight, then we're in for a treat. Uh Triple H and John Cena versus Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, and Kurt Angle. And that's it right now, right? That's all we know. But Isn't that this up, Saturday? Like, I think it's two Saturdays. So, like, we got Raw next week and then Saturday night's main event. Ooh, we have time for a women's tag team match to be added. I can't wait. That's right. Now <laughs> it's time for the main event. We got Big Show coming out and John Cena. Uh, I think I fell asleep halfway through because this match is dog shit. I don't care if it's a WrestleMania rewind. I don't give a fuck about John Cena versus the Big Show. It's just ridiculous so let's skip ahead to something that's interesting when triple h comes out with his big cock and he's holding right. his cock in front of cena and he's laughing at him he's pogging and he's he is like, really eye his cock when he comes out which i'm imagining he's staring at so he doesn't just lose yeah. any control he has and go kiss john cena like he clearly wants to do he keeps hold- his, yeah he keeps his holding cock on is the only thing keeping cock. him here He's holding it yeah. on. He's he's like just gripping it, and he's holding it and showing Cena, and like, like, getting really excited, and Cena just will like is he's confused. I don't know if he's into it. He's I think Cena, at Cena, it. Cena, Cena knows, Cena knows what he's doing, and he's trying very hard to focus in on his match, but uh, you can't help but be distracted by by Triple H's cock. Yeah. And then John Cena turns around and Big Show hits him with a brain buster, dude. That was crazy. How did Big Show do that? <laughs> we got uh, the best moment of the night as Big Show is stomping a mud hole into John Cena's chest and Triple H is laughing. We get Carlito and Chris Masters coming back, but they're sauntering up to the ring like they're just jauntily going next to triple h very happily gonna go fucking let's go guys let's go interrupt this match and fucking kane just appears behind him and punches them both in the back of the head and i don't know what happened i thought carlito's like just smushed an apple in his hand and exploded but i think he pre-gamed and chewed up the apple beforehand and spit it all over the floor and it just yeah, it came out and i laughed so hard i had to watch it like 10 times cuz i was like what the fuck happened why was there just shit all over the floor now yeah kane kane ran down carlito and uh, chris masters running down the ramp and we saw the apple in, in tow 
<laughs> and uh, when Kane Kane made impact with with the tag team, it just <laughs> Carlito like stumbled over and then spit the apple out. <laughs> but it looked like like a car crash. Yeah, if there's... an apple was in a car crash, that's what it looked like. <laughs> I don't even know what happened to Chris Masters. I think he just like disappeared or something because he got was, hit and he was gone it, it, it was a double punch then they went like they both fought along the side of the ramp okay. all three and went to the back and while this is happening triple h is still holding on to his hellacious cock yeah he's getting closer to the ring holding his cock gripping he's, it <laughs> yeah his temptation is getting stronger and stronger and cena's just staring at him and uh, triple h keeps pogging at him and uh cena hits a uh, what was it? Let's see. Was did he hit the superplex yet? Yeah, he hit the superplex. Yeah. He Big Show will will Big Show was getting up. That's what to got him the, excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up to the second rope before Carlito and Masters uh, came down. Okay. Um, and then when they and Kane made their exit, Triple H still uh showing his uh, his beauty. Big Show being distracted by I think his tag team partner fighting off the man formerly known as Carlito and Chris Masters and somewhat I, I assume also being distracted by uh by uh Triple H's beauty. Um and then that's when John Cena takes his uh gets it takes his chance and starts just pounding. Big show sitting up on the turnbuckle and John Cena is just punching Big Show. It looks like in the dick. He's just wailing on him. Bow, 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 bow. Triple H, pow, pow, pow. That's what I'm going to do. Pow, pow, pow. To your huge cock. Pow, pow, pow That's at right. WrestleMania. That's right. And then he hits him with a superplex. That's right. That was awesome. And then uh, Triple H is still walking closer to the ring. And closer. And Cena is still just staring at him. And Big Show gets up and hits him with the boot. Picks, picks Cena up. Tries the choke slam. And Cena hits him with a big-ass DDT. And then uh, Cena gets back up, hits off the ropes, hits the shoulder block. N- nothing happens. Cena off the, the ropes again. Show doesn't uh, hit the clothesline. And uh, Cena hits him in the knee and shows down the one knee. And Cena gets him and hits the FU, and that's it. It's over. And Triple H is rock solid at this point, and they are ready to fuck at next week's Omega Mania. hard. Oh, wait, Mania is not next week. Four, four weeks four away. Weeks. Four weeks. So oh, geez, 20, twenty-seven right. days. Okay, so what are we gonna do for the next four weeks? <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know if Triple H can can contain his beauty for so long. I mean, he has to oh, release no, it at some be, point. They're gonna be tag team coming up. That's right. Oh, oh my! So we're gonna we're gonna have some uh some good some good love making at uh Saturday night's main event, aren't we? Oh my! Oh. I'm I'm excited now. This is really good. <laughs> Yeah, Cena is gonna raw dog Triple H like the Raw Down crew will raw dog <laughs> Smack Up crew on Saturday night's main event in a super show that you'll all hear in 2028, or probably not. Actually, it might just get banned again. That's right. <laughs> but, if we, if yeah. we get banned for uh, the Eugene segment, we're not gonna get banned for this one. <laughs> well, that isn't out yet. We don't know. Uh, maybe you don't know. SoundCloud may have kicked us off. We might be on a Podbean or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> We're on Spotify podcast now. Oh God, wow. that's even worse. Uh, that match went almost 15 minutes. I don't know why. I don't know why they have always just shit main events, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> I can't. I can't escape it. Oh man, we just. I just dealt with main events any better. Well, we just dealt with the 30 minute Undertaker versus Kurt Angle match for the World Heavyweight Title on uh, wow. SmackDown. And it wasn't as good as the one from No Way Out, which y'all should check out. No Way Out. Check out that. Check out the show. Check out the podcast. Like, no way right. I'm doing that ever. Wow, dude. Fuck you. What SmackDown sucks. That's right. Smack- SmackDown doesn't have Triple H's, uh, Triple H's shame live <laughs> and, and in HD. That's right. And in telecast. Jesus Christ. So that's got to be the worst Raw, right? That's going to be the worst Raw of the year. It was okay. Uh, there have been worse ones. I think it's the worst rated at 2.75 on Cage Match. I mean, this depends on, like, I don't think they're invested in the lore of uh, Sean as a man of God. 
Yeah. Fighting the incels. Well, aiding the incels, rather. As we are. I don't think anybody else really gets Vince McMahon's vision. I think they were just like, match bad. Because they're fucking simpletons. That's they right. They didn't understand the raw scope of Vince McMahon. This is Cody-level booking. You just don't get it. Mm-hmm. Cena will be forever. And Triple H will be his martyr. Thank you for listening tonight. We love you. And you just got rawed down. <laughs> you just got cocked down. I'm keeping that in. <laughs> <laughs>